welcome you to our services this morning. Glad you're here. We love your crowd this morning. Glad you took the time to come out and worship with us. Sound like First Baptist. Doing well announcements. Don't forget tonight, uh, 6 o'clock evening worship service. Uh, our mission team will be uh, uh, filling us in on the details of their mis recent mission trip to Kentucky. So you want to be here to hear about their uh, last week. Uh, mission trip, so we'll be here at 6 o'clock for evening worship service. A lot of at 6 o'clock on Wednesday night uh, for the kids and uh, adults at 7. Uh, please come out and support our children. Uh, children's church leaders today will be Marie and uh, Hannah, and next Sunday will be myself and Susan. Uh, last day of the month for Operation Christmas Child Albums of the month for July. Believe it or not, July will be gone after today. Small hammers, and hairbrushes, so if you got those, please turn them in today. And don't forget our upcoming homecoming will be August the 21st. Uh, we will be starting at 10.30, as we do on homecoming, no Sunday school. We'll start at 10.30, and then uh, preaching at 11 with David Green, and afternoon singing with the Eagles Wings. Uh, we will be eating lunch, so uh, be here for that. Please invite somebody to be with us. Uh, let's have a house full for homecoming. Uh, we'll be having a cleanup day uh, next Saturday, August the 6th. Uh, try to get here early. Uh, try to get as much done as we can. Uh, i got a list out front. If you see anything else that needs to do, please add it to the list for me. And we'll try to get those things done next Saturday. Uh, weather permitting, hopefully it'll be pretty. If not, the next, the next Saturday is our ultimate day, but hopefully we won't have to use that day. Uh, and National Back to Church Sunday will be September the 18th. So be thinking of somebody you can invite to come back to church with us. And so looking forward to that. Uh, we'll have a singing Saturday night at Beach Grove. Uh, Brother Kirk Cagle from over at Saragossa Baptist Church will be our guest singer. Looking forward to hearing from him. That's Beach Grove at 6 o'clock. Uh, today is Fifth Sunday Offering. Uh, fifth Sunday, so our offering will be going to the building fund, and so keep that in mind. And do you have any announcements that need to be made? No announcements? Good deal. Hey, Johnny, what about the back to school bash? Oh, yeah. Uh, August the 10th, uh, kids will be going back to school, and we're going to have a back to school bash here Wednesday night, August the 10th. Uh, we're going to have pizza and ice cream, and so we're going to help the kids get readjusted to school. So be, please be here for that. That will start at 6 o'clock, August the 10th, Wednesday night. Any other announcements? In our Sunday school hour, we had 36 in attendance, an offering of $157. Uh, had 29 contacts turned in, 22 daily Bible readers. And we had a $100 donation to the building fund. We'd like to recognize those who met a birthday in the past week. Where are you at? I can't believe she's going to be bashful. <laughs> Anybody else?
this morning. If you're a visitor, please don't feel that way. Uh, we're in God's house, and again, we, we, we appreciate you being here. Uh, we're going to, let's sing this song. We say, sit down. Uh, now, uh, if y'all don't sing out, I may make you sing. I'm just kidding. Uh, that's kind of an inside joke there. But, uh, but anyway, if you will turn to page 140, we can watch on the screen. We're going to sing uh, the first, second, and the fourth.
God, how great is our God. Y'all sing out this morning. Has God been good to you this morning? Amen. Amen. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in life, and God.
tonight. I'll go ahead and say this before I get it later on. At six, we're going to share about the Walker Baptist Association uh, mission trip. Um, this first one I've been able to go on. Uh, we want to share a little bit about that tonight, what God has done. I know y'all that were in the men's breakfast, uh, y'all heard Brother Bobby speak about it and, uh, and what God's done. And, and actually, this morning, I, I know the men, I've already heard a message about, I know Philippians 4 and 19 and, and supplying our needs and for his riches and glory. Uh, but today, I know we, we talked about it being... Uh, King Joash Sunday, and I'll share a little more about that at the end. I know Johnny mentioned earlier that we're, uh, you know, the money that we take up today goes toward our building fund, and we'll talk about that a little more. But, but uh, Brother Bobby, it's kind of funny when he started on this. I've been kind of going back and forth whether to preach this or not. I mean, I know Johnny Cross felt like it's for you. Just kind of keep going back and forth. And really, when Brother Bobby started sharing his message to the men this morning, challenging us. Uh, I knew it's what I needed to preach this morning, and uh, but uh, but I hope you know when we when we look at uh, this scripture today, I, I want all of us today that are Christians. Now, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, know without a shadow of a doubt, I pray it challenges you to see where your heart is, to see what's on your mind 24 hours a day, and but I also pray today if you're lost, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, I'm telling you, that is the best thing that you could ever do in your life. Uh, that's, that's the need all of us have. Uh, you go through life, you've got that hole in your heart, you just feel like nothing can, can fill it up, nothing is going to be able to, to do. But the only thing that's going to fill that is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only thing that can fill that empty void in your life. And you don't, if you don't know him today, now, I'm not asking if you made a decision in the past. I'm not asking if you checked the card. I'm not even asking if you've been baptized before. I'm asking, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Amen. Amen. And uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, today, we're going to look at, in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, I, I, when he was preaching this morning, they come up on this. I thought, man, he's going to preach my message today. Because <laughs> uh, I'm telling you guys, it was a, if, you, if you missed it, it was a blessing. It really was. And, uh, I appreciate the men and and that's what it's all about, uh, is the men stepping up and being leaders, not only in our homes, but also in our churches. Uh, we know the men uh, and, and, and husbands and dads will step up. Uh, we know that, uh, again, help us lead and guide and direct. That's, that's the way it should be, and I'm, and I'm preaching to myself also. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, it says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. And notice it says here, no man, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And that word man in there is talking about riches. It's talking about the treasures. You cannot serve either one. And today as we look to, to God's word, uh, first let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll preach a message on King Joash Sunday. But also we're going to look at money. We're going to look at, at what the Bible says about that. And, and what we're going to do is provide scripture and, and motivation to look at God and, and notice uh, our sacrificial gift that, that, that God has given us for how uh, we can give uh, what he's done for us. We know we're commanded as believers to tithe, and we'll talk about that a little more. I don't get ahead of myself, but I want all of us again to really focus on ourselves and, and, and what God would call us to do today. God, we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for all that you do. God, I can't thank you enough uh, again for this church, Lord, and, and God, I pray for every person that's sitting on these pews today, God, and 
And I pray that we're all focused on you. We've got that single light. The light of the body is the eye. And I hope I pray it's single. I pray it's focused on Jesus today. But I'm afraid today in churches all over America, they're all over darkness. They're looking at other things rather than Jesus Christ. And I pray today that you would please just uh, preach this message, God, as only you can. Lord, if you don't preach it, it will not be preached. God, I need your help, God. And, and I thank you again for Bob, Brother Bobby's message this morning, Lord. I thank you for it challenging us. And, and God, thank you. I pray you bless him today as he's preaching at Falls City Baptist Church, God. Just bless him as he brings the message there. God, I thank you for our men. I thank you for our women. I thank you for our youth. Thank you for our kids, God. Just thank you for all that you do. Uh, God, but more importantly, thank you for the gift of salvation. God, thank you that we can know today, just as we preached last Sunday, we can know, we can know, we can know the heavens are home. And I pray if anybody in here has doubt today, God, they would make sure today and know. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. But as we think about the, the gift or, or, or things that we can give to God, and, and I know Brother Johnny had mentioned our fifth Sunday offering is always a tribute to our building fund. And, and you may be saying, well, uh, you know, y'all keep talking about that, but what exactly are y'all looking at? Now, if you've been in any of our business meetings, uh, and, and this is not plans, this is nothing, this is just a picture off of the off of internet, you know how Google is, you know, uh, you know, you can Google just about anything, and, and what we're looking at as a church, and y'all know in the past we, we need an upgrade for our fellowship hall for sure, y'all know that, it's nothing new, those that's been here for a long time, but I want to show a picture just to give you a visual, and I know this is nothing, it don't have to be configured this way, I may have to come up, I don't know if it come uh, what you got here is on where, actually where the gym is at in the middle. If you move all of it to the left, then this part of the of the floor plan would be classrooms, it'd be a kitchen, it'd be bathrooms, it'd also possibly be like a chapel for awanas and things of that nature. Something that we're we're working toward. I, I mean, I'm just sharing with you what's on our heart and our vision. I know we've had people that's been praying for years and years. You know, God would would speak through us. God would would do the, the, the work because, again, as we look to this, I know this is just a floor plan. This is not nothing. Uh, it's 100 by 60. We talk to different people that have those same, uh, eight different churches that have the same floor plan, 100 by 60. But let me tell you this. Don't sit here and think today, well, man, all they do is they just try to build a monument. They just try to build something there in town. Like, no, it's something that we want to do for the glory of God. But more importantly, we're not going to overstep God's bounds. We're going to do what God wants us to do. And no matter what that need is. So as you are giving uh, every fifth Sunday, I know we even had somebody that, that earmarked it for $100 in Sunday school. That's what we're working toward because in your mind, you think about when we've had fall festivals in the past. When we had vacation Bible schools in the past. When we met in our fellowship hall, we didn't have enough room to house everybody, did we? Right or wrong? Right. No. Didn't have enough room to house anybody. They're playing outside, it starts raining, what happens? We have to go inside, right? And, and uh, that would be something that, that God could use for His glory that we could reach souls for Him. And that, that's all it's about. And, and if y'all have problems with that, come see me afterwards. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it further. But I just wanted to kind of give you a visual. Uh, but if you will go back to, to uh, go back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, if you would. Um, so as we think about not laying up for ourselves treasures upon the earth, uh, you know, a lot of people today, um, and we'll get into a little bit more here in a little bit, but, but to think about everybody may not feel like they have money, but I promise you we all have treasures. Eh? We know we have treasures. Uh, but I want us to look today, when we think about uh, emphasizing the chest of Joash, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but every fifth Sunday through the end of the year, we'll be top calling it King Joash Sunday. Uh, I know in October there'll be a fifth Sunday. There'll also be one in January of 2023. That's hard to believe that we're already getting close to 2023. Uh, how many of y'all think whenever I was growing up, I thought we'd have flying saucers and be like Buck Rogers, didn't y'all? Y'all know who Buck Rogers is? Uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy that how time is flying. But, but when we begin to talk about money at the church, uh, we get a variety of responses. You know, some don't want to attend just for that reason. Now, today, my heart is, is I want us to, to, to look at, at God's Word, and, and according to Jesus, money is a spiritual issue, and it's something that needs to be addressed. 
But I believe also that all of us need to hear and understand what the Bible says. You may say, well, brother, you know, you may be new, you may not know uh, me as a pastor or a preacher, that kind of thing. Well, when I started here, you can ask the congregation. I didn't, it wasn't money, it wasn't the issue. I just wanted the opportunity. I didn't care if they paid me $10, $50, whatever it was, and they, they can tell you that. So money is not an issue. Not, it ain't something that we're trying to, to, uh, to try to put a feather in our hat. And, but knowing that the small town purpose building, whatever we feel led to do as a church going forward, it's all about him. We're praying for his guidance because whatever it is, it's all about him, nothing about us. Amen. amen. Can somebody say amen this morning? It's all about amen. him. So when we think about uh, where was that here in Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus spoke of money and possessions frequently. Now we know that giving will help us uh, reach people. You think, well, how does that work? Well, let me ask you this. Just do OCC. How much is y'all giving? Y'all y'all some money for shipping, giving y'all some money to buy items and that kind of thing. Just think of the potential just through those boxes. How many people does it possibly touch one box? Seven to ten. Seven to ten. Possibly touch seven to ten. You know, think about that. Think about giving and those type things. I'm not talking about building just a building. I'm talking about giving to those type of things as well. Also, just so you know, if we quit giving as a church, uh, can't pay a fire bill and that kind of thing, what's going to happen? You see churches all over the world that's being shut down, right? They're for sale sign in front of it. It's sad when we think about that. But it's all about him. Again, it's nothing about us. And so as we also know the benefits for those who choose to give. Now, I've heard in business meetings before, uh, people say, you cannot outgive God. Have y'all heard that before in the business meeting? Well, yeah, I mean, I've heard Brother Johnny say that. Uh, you just cannot give God. And not just by money, but your time uh, spent serving Him and doing things for God. And it's just, it's just a great thing. People, they have different thoughts about what the Bible says. Now, there's, there's people that have a, I guess you call it a poverty uh, theology. They, they feel like it's wrong to have money or possessions. Now, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, it tells us there, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. Does it say money is the root of all evil? It doesn't, does it? It says what? The love of money is the root of all evil. It says, but while, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. And that word erred there means to wander from the faith. Wander from the faith. So we see there in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, that it's the love of money. There's also the prosperity theology. If we give, we'll always be rewarded. The more we give, the more we get. That, that, that ain't the way the Bible teaches it, guys. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, you can watch the TV preachers. You can hear them saying all kinds of different things. And, and uh, there's even a church today that's, that's had all these things going on. They've got documentaries out on, on, on how they can get people to give more money. That's not what it's all about. If I'm preaching this morning about anything, we're talking about Jesus Christ. We're talking about him being born. He's been crucified on the rugged cross. And Jesus Christ is risen today, amen, that we can have that eternal life. And while we're here on this earth, it's our job to try to carry as many people with us as we can, amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about anybody. It's about Jesus. About Jesus. Now, when we think about prosperity preachers, uh, again, we, we see many of them. We see them. They'll have millions of dollars, big planes, all this kind of thing. If they really felt like that, why ain't they giving all their money to be able to get back? It don't work. But what they do, honestly, is they prey on people and their emotions and that kind of thing. It's sad that we live in that day and age. People giving up their hard, fixed income money, as Bobby talked about this morning, to, to things of that nature. And all they're using it for is their own pleasures. That's, and, and, that's, and that's Wayne there, okay? Uh, but I believe with all my heart. Now, now, now there's a proper... Theology, and I'm going to try to get that across this morning with God's help, is to view our possessions as that they have been entrusted to us by God, and we've been responsible for managing them. Is that, if y'all believe, y'all believe that this morning? Everything that we have really belongs to Him. Amen. Amen. Everything we got really belongs to Him. Every one of us struggle with materialism. It's the number one obsession in, in America, okay? Materialism. You got to have more. You got to do this. You got to do that. How many times even in your life you're like, on this job, if I can just get the right to make this right here, 
buddy, I'd be, I'd be set. And then what happens? You make that amount, and guess what? It changes, don't it? If I just make this right here, because no matter what you make, uh, again, it's just you want more and more and more. But what we must choose is between God and money. Now, Jesus devoted so much of his teaching to this area of life. Now, we're reading part of the, the Sermon on the Mount here in Matthew 6 through, and, and 7, and there's a lot of things here from the Beatitudes to, to the what they call the Lord's Model Prayer. But it, it's also this uh, talking about our heavenly investments investments here is in the middle of that Sermon on the Mount. And also, you can take it a step further, uh, I know a, a while back, we on Wednesday nights, we studied Lord Teach Us to Pray. It was a Steve Gaines uh, led Bible study. And if you take the, the Sermon on the Mount, right in the middle of that sermon, y'all know what he talked about? He talked about prayer. Right in the middle. And let me tell you something. In, in our life, even as, as we seek guidance in what God will lead us to do, we've got to pray. Amen? Amen. We've got to pray to God. We've got to continue to pray. We've got to continue to, to seek His face. Yes, uh, we want to, to, to just glorify Him in all that we do, but we, we see here too within that Sermon on the Mount, because we know there were many people that were listening to Jesus that day, We know that Jesus, he, he preached on how to treat people. You know, it's very important that we treat people. And I know even as we talk sometimes in the in, in the world, in our work world, uh, wherever you go as far as your job or school, if you'll treat people like you'd want to be treated, I'm telling you, that's a good good way to, to go through life. And, and as we come in contact with people, just as Brother Bobby shared the testimony this morning, Every life that's still on this side of eternity has a soul, and all of them are precious to God. Amen? And, and we've got to, to do what we can. Also, it talks about how to forgive. You know, how many of y'all had to ask forgiveness for something you messed up on? I mean, all of us have. And, uh, and, and, I, and I, I wished I was perfect, but I'm not. But it talks about how to pray. And eventually, it, it talked about how to handle money, how to, how to handle treasures. And Jesus, Jesus is challenging us here. So the question that I have is, where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? To answer that question, there are four questions we've got to ask ourselves. So let's first ask about the, the durability test, I guess is a good way to, to look at. Um, how long will it last? How long will it last? Now if we look at Back in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, it says, Lay not up, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. It says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. The word treasure from the Greek word thesauros, means a deposit, it means wealth, is what that's talking about there. But when it talks about laying up, uh, lay up, lay not up, or lay up for yourselves treasure, it means to gather, it means to amass, it means to reserve. Uh, the, again, that, that, that's what it's talking about there. Lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. So when we think about the dur uh, durability test, you know, Jesus used the word treasure, not money, because a lot of them have not felt like they had uh, money, but they, they all had treasures. You think, what are you talking about? Well, does all of us live in a home? Does all of us have a car that you could drive up? You may or may not. I'm sure a lot of us have phones. I'm telling you right now, right? Amen. Amen. Okay, nobody has a phone, do you? Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but there's people today that look at their phones like the biggest treasure on the face of the earth. Amen. When all it is is Satan, I tell you. Yeah. Satan has used those to get our mind off what should be on. Amen. Amen. Sorry about that. That didn't cost anything extra this morning. Uh, but we can we have treasures, home, car, boats, all these different things. And, and as we said earlier, these things are, are in, in particular not wrong because but it talks about the love of money is the root of all label. It's where we where we look at that durability test. So we know if we look in, in Malachi chapter three, I think you got it there. Yeah, okay. Talks about tithing here. Uh, it says, will, will a man rob God? And I, and I, I mean, when you ask that question, you say, man, nobody, I wouldn't rob God. 
Yeah, I wouldn't do that. But notice it says, Yet have ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Notice what it says here in verse 10. It says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, which that word there means to try or to test, uh, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive. Now I'm not, again, this is not, you're saying, well, brother, you know, it sounds like you're, you're talking about prosperity there. I'm not talking about that. But let me just show you something. I've got three, I've got ten coins here, okay? And I just want you to think about this for a second. Just pretend like this is what I, what I receive as my payday uh, at the end of the week, every two weeks, by, by monthly, whatever you do. But you have ten coins here, and this is all your pay that you got for the for the week, or just say, we'll just say the week. All right? So as you, you got your, your ten coins, that's the ten, ten dollars there. Well, as far as when you get your pay, a lot of us, what happens is we start writing our bills. All right? We start taking our bills off. I'm going to wait till we pay my bills, and I'm going to see. I'm, I'm going to give them a tithe, okay? I'm going to give them a tithe. But we start paying our bills, and what happens, we get down here, ugh, don't have enough money there, okay? I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people have done that. But this is what I want to share with you. And I know from, from knowing what God is and our devotion to Him, what should happen is, is this right here is 100% of our pay. We take that 10% out. We give it to God for His glory. And guess what? God is going to bless us over 90%. Amen? Amen. Are y'all with me this morning? Is that true? That's what the Bible says. God will bless that 90%. And I'm not telling you anything that, that we hadn't read the scripture and heard all of our lives, but, but it's very important that we step out and, and be proactive in giving and, and giving it back to God. And, and it's all about that. Again, we talked about that being a spiritual issue. So there's two things that happen as far as our, when we think about the durability test, we talk about they decay. It talks about there the garments. You know, they were made of wool, and, and these garments that talk, when it mentioned moth and rust, that's corrupt. Um, they actually had these garments made of wool. Moth, moss would attack it. Moth, I guess, you know what I'm talking about, some of these uh, fabric. Uh, it would attack, you would eat these um, garments up, and also rust would corrode them as well. So that's what it's making mention of, because these garments, they cost a lot of money. Uh, to them, and, and it was very important for them uh, that, that they, they had some some made of wool here, and, and that's just like our possessions. You know, I live in a home. I've got a car. Uh, you know, y'all may have the same thing. One day after a while, it's going to be in the junk heap somewhere. You know, one day in the future, it's going to be burned up. Nothing's going to be left. It's all temporary, right? Right. Temporary. Amen. 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 I don't think I listen to this one, but uh, they're temporary. All these things, all, all the things we have is temporal. They will decay. And also they'll disappear. How many of y'all have been robbed before? Raise your hand here. Okay, just about. I mean, I have before. It, it's, it's scary, you know, to, to think somebody breaking in your home. But at this time, there were valuables that were often buried and hidden in a brick wall. And they were talking about the thieves. They would break through and steal. And, and so either way, looking at uh, the durability test, either way, it was not secure. It was not secure. Now, I guess the next question is, where will you do your banking? <laughs> now, I work at a bank. I'm not here for Citizens Bank in Winfield. Okay, I'm not talking about that kind of bank. I'm not talking about that kind of bank. Because one day after a while, it'll be gone too. Amen. It's just, uh, that, that's what we see here. But in heaven, when it talks about making our deposits in heaven, they will never disappear. They are insured by God himself. Amen? Amen. So how do we do it? How do we do this? How do we make heavenly deposits? How do we do our banking in heaven? By investing in things that will last forever. You know, there's only two things. There's only two things that fall into that category that will last forever. One of them is this right here. God's Word. Amen? Amen. 
The next one is people, their souls. They will last forever, and it will either be heaven or hell. One of the two, right? Amen. A hundred years from now, I'm not going to live to be 151. You know, what's going to matter? Is it going to matter that I drove a 2013 Honda Civic with 207,000 miles on it? Is it going to, it ain't going to matter. Is it, is it going to matter that I work at a bank? Is it going to, does it matter if I was, I used to say the President of the United States, I ain't going to say that much no more. But, uh, but you know, if he was president or if he was, in, you know, CEO of some large company, had all the, had all these things, had the lake house, had the boats, had the, this, had, it's all that going to matter one day after a while. It ain't it. It's all going to be gone one day after a while. What's going to matter is that who's in heaven and who's in hell. Amen. And if we, if we share the gospel with them. And today, when we think about God's word and, and people, everything is going to decay or disappear. Nothing that is material will last forever. This old body right here, one day is going to be gone. Amen. It's going to be gone. I may die before next Sunday. Johnny may be having to preach next Sunday to, to fill in for him, but I want you to know something. If I do, I'm in heaven. Amen. Amen. Because of what Jesus has done. We're not guaranteed another day. We're not guaranteed to even walk out the door. We're not even guaranteed to get off the pew and walk out the door. It's all about Jesus. If you miss him, you miss it all. But also nothing will last forever. God... Um, actually set it up that way. If we look at 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 through 17 it says, Love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but what is it? Of what? The world. But notice it says, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The word will there in the Greek means a determination. It means a choice. It means a, a purpose. It means a desire. It means the pleasure of God. It means the, the will of God. Read that again. The, the, the world passes away. So everything that we see, even this building is going to be gone one day after a while. Amen? Amen? But as we see here, the he that doeth the will of God, he that doeth the will of God, the desire of God, what God would, would call us to do, first and foremost, except his son Jesus is Lord and Savior, as we do the will of God, it says abide forever. Every time we run across forever in the Bible, it always reminds me of sand watch. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Forever. Y'all know, y'all heard that? Y'all seen that? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Forever. Forever. It's forever and ever. We can't comprehend forever, can we not? Can't comprehend forever. But what the Word of God says, the world's going to pass away. And all of this stuff that we're seeing today, all the things we're seeing on the news, all the things we're seeing on social media, all these things that's going against the Word of God, all of these lusts is going to be gone too. But it says, the he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. It's doing the will, doing that purpose that God has got in your life. Invest in getting God's Word into the lives of people. Brother Bobby this morning in, in the men's thing, he, he, he testified about investing his time. Okay. Investing his time in the lives of people. So where am I investing? If we go to verse 21, we go to verse 21. I guess we'll get your Bibles, Matthew chapter 6. We're not going to let, let the devil win this morning, are we? Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, it says, For the, where the treasure is, there will your heart be also. Does everybody know what your heart is? That's your 
you know, your, your heart, your thoughts, your feelings, your innermost being. That's what it's talking about there. It says, where am I? And the next question I've got, and it's really the test of the heart. Where am I investing my time and my money? Your heart follows your money. We will never be able to get our heart focused on heaven as long as our attention is uh, uh, on these material things. So now, when we think about the test of the heart there, where, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. If we look at verse 22 to 23, now we're going to look at the mind test here. It says, but If thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If th therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? It says, No man... No man could serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. It says, you cannot serve God and mammon. So if we look at where our focus is, Jesus says there's only two ways to look at things. You know, the mind wants to focus only on things down here, uh, but, but it's also about if that's the case, we'll be filled with darkness. But if our thoughts are filled with how we deposit our treasures here in heaven, then our lives are filled with light. Amen? So we got to be focused on, on him. Now, uh, also, if we look at verse 24, the test of who our master is, uh, whom do we serve? You know, Jesus, if everybody's got your Bible in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, uh, it talks about there, it says, who, basically I'm asking, who do you serve? You know, Jesus is placing the two up against the other. It's either God or it's the riches. One of the two. <clears throat> and he says, choose. But you can only choose one. Jesus doesn't say, you better not do this. Or it would be better if you didn't do this. Notice what he says there in verse 24. It says, no man can serve and that word serve there means to, to be a slave, to, to be bondage of, two masters, for either you'll hate the one and love the other, or you'll hold the one, despise the other. But notice it says, it would be better if you didn't serve God, man. They don't say that, does it? You cannot. You cannot serve God and man. Cannot do it. Cannot serve God and man. If everybody has their Bibles, I know it's not on the screen. I want you to read this with me. Luke chapter 12, verse 15 through 21. It's going to give us an example of what we're seeing here. And when we think about our um, possibility of, of building a multi-purpose building, this is a great scripture to check on ourselves whether we are doing things for the right reasons or are we doing it for God's glory. Now notice in Luke chapter 12, verse 15 through 21, it says, He said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetous, covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. There will I bestow my fruit, all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for me for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. So notice there's 11 eyes and minds there, right? The 
ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Y'all that have a garden, is there anything wrong with having pl plenty of, of crops or, or that, you know, vegetables you can get out of the garden? There's nothing wrong with that. Notice his attitude here. But he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? And like us today, when we look at what we've been talking about, I hope you know my heart is, is, is God, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? It's about you. It's not about us. Amen? Amen. But notice 11 eyes and mine. He wanted to tear down this barn, build a greater one, and, and bestow my fruits, my goods. And, and, and basically, just wanted to sit back, be content. And, and it kind of reminded me, going back to... to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse, I know I read 10 earlier, but it also mentions here that, that godliness with contentment is great gain. I work at a bank, y'all know that. Any kind of banking, if you hear of a gain, that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. <laughs> So contentment, godliness with contentment is great gain. And that, that word contentment in the Greek means self-satisfaction, means sufficiency of what God would have us do. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. How many of y'all ate this morning? Y'all ate breakfast? How many of y'all ate biscuits this morning? How many of y'all got clothes on? I, I hope all y'all did. Okay? <laughs> food and raiment. We've all got food. We've all ate. We, we all will make, we'll eat lunch a little bit. But having food and raiment, let us therefore be content. Ain't that great to think about what God has done for each and every one of us? But notice this day that we'll be rich, uh, fall into temptation and a snare. And that snare means a trap, it means a noose. It talks about where birds are caught at. Uh, and, and, and to many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. And then it goes on to say again, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, they have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows or griefs. I'll share something with you. I know I said earlier that I was going to talk to you about the, the chest of Joash. If you'll give me just a second. Here's, the, here's our chest, okay? <laughs> this is the chest. Uh, Shelly found it for me. Hobby Lobby, believe that. You, know, you can find everything at Hobby Lobby, can't you? Uh, but I, I told y'all we're going to make an emphasis on uh, King Joash Sunday. And you might be saying, what does that even mean? What, what does that, you know, what does that even mean? Well, I know since the computer is doing what it's doing and, and the power keeps blinking off and on, turn to the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 24, if you have your Bibles. Look it up on your phone. I think it's important that you read this for yourself. 2 Chronicles, chapter 24, in verse 1. So when I bring this chest that, that kind of represents the chest of Joash, while you're turning there, I'm going to ask you, where are you storing up your treasures? Are you storing up your treasures here, or are you storing them there? Now, I'm not talking about just monetary. I'm just saying every soul, everything that we do for the glory of God, every soul that's saved, we're, we're, is making that deposit into heaven, amen, and, uh, and doing things for God. If you turn to 2 Chronicles in the Old Testament, Chapter 24. It's kind of neat when you, when you read this. It says, Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. Michaela, how, how old did Cadence, how old was she today? Eight. Eight, okay. All right, all of a sudden, Cadence, eight years old, is going to rule us. All right. Think about that for a second. <laughs> uh, but it's just kind of neat. Now, Johnny's a pig, so I mean, Johnny, he can do anything he wants to do, so I, I know that. But, uh, but just think about in your mind, Joash, being seven years old, 
when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. Okay, don't, don't miss that. Uh, his mother's name also was Zabiah of Bathsheba. And Joash did that. This is, this is a, a good verse to look at for Joash. Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of Jehoda the priest. Uh, and Jehoda, Jimmy may get me say that better, took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. And he gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out unto the cities of Judah, gather all, all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year, and see that you hasten the matter. How did it? The Levites hastened it not. And the king called for Jehada, the, the chief, and said unto him, Why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection, according to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord of the congregation of Israel, for the tabernacle of witness? For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God, and also all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord that they bestowed unto Balaam. And at the king's commandment, they made a chest and set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. And they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring in to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought in and cast into the chest until they had made an end. Now it came to pass that at what time the chest was brought unto the king's office by the hands of the Levites, when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe and the high priest's officer came and emptied the chest and took it and carried it to his place again. Thus they did day by day and gathered money in abundance. And the king and Je Jehoiada uh, gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord and hired masons and carpenters to repair the house of the Lord and also such as wrought rind, iron, and brass to mend the house of the Lord. So the workmen wrought, and the work was perfected by them. And they set the house of God in its state and strengthened it. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada, whereof were made vessels for the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister, to offer widow and spoons and Vessels of gold and silver, and they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of the head. So we see here the, the king of uh, King Joash here, and uh, in this Old Testament here, story about Gideon. Uh, when he became king, he was almost seven years old, and long after he became aware of the fact that the temple in Jerusalem was in great need of repair. So we asked the people of Israel to, to bring an offering in excess to uh, them and enough money to repair God's house. And you may be sitting there thinking, well, what you're talking about, it ain't repairing something, but we want to improve to be able to, to do the work of, of the Lord. So Joash did right in the eyes of the Lord, and at his command, they made a chest and set it outside the gate of the house of the Lord. And they actually filled it, and they would empty it, and then they would do it again. So he rebuilt the temple to its original condition. Now this morning, I, I pray that you're not, like we talked about earlier, you think, well, brother, all Brother Wayne's talking about is money. Well, I have, but it's really our spiritual heart is what I'm trying to get at. Where's your heart? Where's your treasure? Are you laying up things on the earth? Or are you laying up treasures in heaven? Been a pastor, been preaching for many years, and, and, and uh, ministering for many years and that's the thing about it in my life I've been through a lot of things and y'all a lot of y'all know my story and some may not but there have been times I just wanted to throw up my hands and quit just be like man I'm done man if this was life about I'm done but every time I get to that point I start thinking about what God done for me and I think about what God did in sending his only begotten son to die on the cross for Wayne Page as much as I've messed up, you think you've messed up too much? God just wants you to give it all to him. And the devil's in here right now saying, don't do it. There's a more appropriate time. Today is the day of salvation. Amen.
But this morning, I know the computer is down. Is down. We're going to do something a little different this morning. We're not going to have a song. We're not going to have any, any music at all. And at the end of the service, you may be saying, well, we're looking at this chest right here. I'm going to have it back. And what I'm going to do every fifth Sunday, we're going to put it out. We're going to talk about King Joe Ash. Um, we're going to put it toward building fund and doing something for God's glory and honor. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we just thank you for many blessings. God, I pray in the name of Jesus this morning. First, anybody here, Lord, that, that may not know for sure they're saved, they're hoping they're going to heaven, they're not sure, I pray today is the day they nail it down at the cross. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would, that you would please uh, speak to our hearts this morning. God, that we would check our priorities. God, that we would check our focus. God, and I pray all of our focus is on you. And I thank you, God, for all that you do. I pray, God, you'd forgive me of anything I, I failed you with, Lord, in my life. And, and God, I pray again that you would just send your Holy Spirit down. God, and we thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you speak to hearts. God, help us be obedient to what you call us to do. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just keep your heads bowed. If you'd like to pray, whatever the need is, please come forward.